wanted quiet, especially today, because this is going to be the most important thing. Because I'm going to read to you a profound statement that everybody says is crazy. And everybody says is wrong. One of the first profound statements is when the Apostle Paul in Corinthians says that people look upon the, the mysteries of the, the high reality of the soul and the mysteries of the kingdom as foolishness. Nobody believes that. They say, oh, I'm exempt, I can understand. They're not exempt at all. And there's a reason why they would look upon the high reality of soul and the mysteries of the kingdom of God as foolishness. In fact, they would call it heresy. Um, but there is a statement in what's known as the epistle of Peter and James, which I'm a namesake. So I, understood, I understand what was being said here, firsthand. And in this epistle, which is basically rejected or suppressed by the church, part of it says, Hear me, brethren and fellow servants, if we should give the books, this is from an Ebonite perspective now, because they were the authors of the scriptures. And they created dumbed-down scriptures, which they gave to the Gentile, non-Jewish converts. They also create another set of dumbed-down scriptures for the Pharisees, for the Jewish converts, but they were usually kept different to address to the people they were doing. So, he says, Hear me, brethren, fellow servants, if we should give the books to all indiscriminately, and they should be corrupted by any daring men, or be perverted by interpretations, as you have heard that some already have done. In the case of the... Gentile, in the case of the non-Jewish, they were corrupting the scriptures as soon as they were given into their hands. Any epistles that they wrote. There was people still living who wrote an epistle, found that they corrupted it, made cop corrupted copies to say what they thought he should have said, but doing it in their own name. It's all in Bible covenant. Anyway, some already have done. Now is the most important statement, one of the most important statements that you will ever hear. And what he's saying is that this esoteric knowledge that's in these scriptures that were never handed over to the multitudes or the teachings that were never handed over to should be corrupted. Quoting, it will remain even for those who really seek the truth always to wander in error. Now, everybody rejects that. Everybody says, oh, I can know about God. I can know about this. I, I know, I know. I, same thing as what Paul says if you that you'll, you'll, you'll reject the mysteries of the kingdom as utter foolishness. And this is true. It will remain even for those who really seek the truth, always to wander in error. Now the question is why? And the question is why is what we spoke about yesterday with Ra. And that was because they don't understand the reality of the soul. They don't understand the macrocosm and the microcosm. They don't understand that the soul was created in the image of God, and you're not the soul. So, and this is why all the religions of the world are basically nothing but carnal milk. All of them are incomplete, all of them are in error, all because of what's written right there. And they all would say, this is utter foolishness. I can seek God. Why can't I, you know, why can't I know the truth? Why will I always wander in error? Because unless you understand the higher reality of the soul, and your relationship to the soul, you'll always be in error. It's called, we call it the cosmology of mind. It's one of the many words I've created, but it's, that's what it is. And this goes with the Gospel of Thomas, and this is important. But if you will not know yourselves, you dwell in poverty, and it is you who is that poverty. It doesn't say if you will not know God. It doesn't say if you do not know Jesus. It does not say if you don't know the Gospel. It says you do not know yourself, your true self. You dwell in poverty. And then I'm from another part in the Gospel of Thomas. I added 
Whoever finds himself is superior to the world. How can this be? How can be the person who finds himself is superior to all the world? Because all the world is wandering in error. Because they don't know themselves. Which goes to the saying in the Bible that's still left there by the corruptors. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very self? The self is the soul. That's taken from Luke 9.25. To see how all these go together. They're all connected. It's all rea a reality that few people understand. And to answer some questions on what they're talking about, I had a quote from my friend St. Teresa. That's favorite. The soul, writes St. Teresa, is as a castle made of a single diamond, God is one, in which there are many rooms, <clears throat> just as in heaven there are many mansions. So at the, macroco at the macrocosm level it talks about, it's quoting from the scriptures, in the kingdom there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place to you, it says in the Gospel of John. Jesus says to his disciples, here St. Teresa says, well, that's the, that's the macrocosm. There are many mansions. The God, the king, the God is, is, is like a single diamond that has many mansions. But in the microcosm, which is the soul, it says, just as in heaven, the soul, just as in heaven, are many mansions. In, within the soul, there are many rooms. Now what are these rooms? What is he talking about? This is, you have to understand this before you can understand anything. To go beyond a certain very low level point. You can do the yogi thing and chakra gaze all day long. You can do the dogmatic thing, whatever you want to do. You can read the Torah, you can read whatever you want. But if you don't understand what St. Teresa is saying, stating here and what the Gospel of Thomas states, you dwell in poverty. Gospel of Thomas saying 84 reads, Jesus said, when you see your likeness, you rejoice. But when you see your images, which came into being before you, and which neither die nor become manifest, how much will you bear? Doesn't say when you see God. It says when you see your likeness. Your likeness is your soul, your higher, your true self, your whole soul, your, your soul self. The images are all the previous lifetimes that your soul has lived. Most of them are failure. That's why he says, when you see the images that came into being before you, which neither die, because they still exist within the many rooms, or as she say, many rooms in the diamond of the soul, and yet they never became manifest. This word manifest is talking about achieving the next stage of birth, becoming the first, second stage, which would be a Buddha, an enlightened one. Um, yesterday I spoke of my wife Flo as having achieved the re next stage of birth as an Ammonite, which meant that she was then a Buddha. And all that she's been since then is all drawing from that second stage of birth which she achieved. All right, so that likeness part of us, that's the true self. That's, that's, that's who we truly are. In this world, we've been portrayed as the ego self, false personality, by many names. But we are an image. We are an image that came into being. And whether we fail and we're added to the whole clump of images that our past lives have failed, all those failed images, it does not say that they reincarnate, does it? There's no reincarnation here. Because they're, they're there. That's, a, that's like a failed experience. That's like you tried, you failed, and lost, well, that's it. It remains within a little room, within the soul. And it remains there as experience. This is why when they talk about hell, eternal hell, because that person is 
That's where they are, that's who they are. And they remain forever within the reality of the soul as a bad experience. Within our own self, each day can be compared to a, a segment within ourself, independently of the rest. And we draw upon these past experiences and what we're doing right now. And there's no such thing as time. I have a whole chapter on that if you want to go into it. But some other time, if you want to write again across the forum, I make reference to it all the time. And I call it the matrix of the soul, or the matrix of the soul mind. And like, well, use the experience of Larry, who I brought up to his soul, up to his true self. And he saw all his past lives all dwelling within the reality of the soul. Just like it says here, they're not manifest as the soul, yet they remain as a part of the soul, in like a little room within the mansion of the soul. They're there forever. And they're there as a bad day in the life of the soul, just like we had a bad day. The bad day doesn't disappear, it's just there and remains forever. Um, and that there is no such thing as time, or time is a dimension of consciousness that can be moved in, is how you can regress people, not only regress people in past lives, but talk to them when they're in that past life. And even those past lives, personalities, can actually come into the present under proper conditions and re-manifest in the present. Especially if you happen to be someone that's attained Buddhaship. I put Christship, that's, that's above that. Um, the historical Jesus attained two more stages of birth beyond what, would, what the Buddha, what the enlightened one would attain. The little person that attains the next stage of birth. Alright, so I wrote the next time, our true self. Who is our true self? Who are we truly? And it's, we are a being of light, a being of energy. And when you ask when you go into the presence of your true self and you ask, what are you? They'll portray themselves as what they call the mental mind. And they are the balance point between the physical and the spiritual, between male and female. None of these things exist in the soul because they are the balance of everything. And the amount of light that each soul has is dependent upon the marriage of all the opposites within the soul. Since the physical is female, regardless of whether you're male or female, in relation to the spiritual nature, that means that all that you have accomplished all comes into the dynamic, and that's, that's dependent upon how much your soul knows, how much you've experienced, and how much light, the size of that. If someone comes into the presence of a truly advanced spiritual soul, they think they're coming to the presence of God, because they've never seen anything like it. It'll envelop them. It'll take them. And it's, 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 uh, it's a true awakening, just coming into the presence of a spiritually advanced soul. In spirit, most of the, the majority of souls would look like weak, flickering stars at night. Because the souls are undeveloped. Why are they undeveloped? Because they've gone from life to life to life to life, and all the images have failed. They've all been followers followers of political leaders, followers of philosophical leaders, followers of religious leaders, heavy in the books. They haven't experienced for themselves. They haven't merged and found truth within themselves. They haven't sought the kingdom within. They haven't manifested the soul. After the next stage of birth, which is what I described my wife Flo as achieving when she was an Ebonite, then you have the next stage of birth beyond that, the spiritual birth. You can't work on the spirit until you overcome the mental division between you and your soul. And if you understand the genealogy, the symbolism of the genealogy of Jesus in the, in the Gospel of Matthew, with the kingdom, the three, 14, 14, 14, what they're talking about is the three stages of birth prior to the final stage, which is what's portrayed in the Gospel. So what it says was, he perfected in the physical, he perfected in the soul, he perfected in the spiritual, now he was going to be united oneness with the Logos, or the mind of God. Symbolically, that's what it's saying. 
as an introduction to the gospel, which was did not appear in the original Hebrew version of the gospel, but was added later on, mainly for the... And this is also what the virgin birth is all about. When we talk about a virgin birth, we're not talking about the birth of a, from a physical woman, we're talking about a, the birth from the mother, the Holy Spirit. And this is something each one of us must accomplish within ourselves. We all must be born of the virgin. We're talking about, um, and this is probably Dina can relate to, what is, uh, what's his name? What? Um, Joseph. What's it in Hebrew? Joseph, we will add. That's it. What is Joseph? Joseph was the, was the 11th son of Jacob. We're counting numbers now. The first 10 was, was not born of, the, the last two were born of Rebecca. No. Rachel. 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 Rebecca was the other His one. His mother. His mother. Um, so, and we know that the first son is always the genitive of power. That's why the first son of the Egyptians was struck down. That was the genitive of power of the Egyptians that was holding them in bondage. The first son is always a genitive power, that number one. Well, number 11 would constitute the genitive power in the kingdom. So to say that Jesus was born of Joseph, that's the genitive power of the kingdom. That's what merged with the virgin or the Holy Spirit. And this is all internal within himself. So while the while Jesus was not born of a physical virgin, he was born, see he thinks it's funny, must be true. He was born spiritually of the genitive power of the kingdom and the Holy Spirit, which is what's necessary to be and to, and to go through the next stages of birth at the level you're at. Who did Mary represent? Mary represents the Holy Spirit. Uh, the purified means, uh, feminine. Well, you want to, you want, you want the quote from the original gospel of the, of the Hebrews. Um, if you want, I can get it for you. Um, well, I'll do it later. But Mary is representative, not of a person, but of the spirit sanctified spirit. Mary can only come when the body is pure, when the mind is pure. That's why all the women in the Gospels are named Mary, and why in the Gospel of Nazarene, Jesus' wife was of course named Mary. And this is a condition of the flesh that permits the Holy Spirit to come to you. Now when the Holy Spirit mingles or is impregnated by the genitive power of the kingdom as symbolized in Joseph in the name Joseph and you have the next stage of birth the conception of the next stage of birth within you Didn't Jesus, doesn't the gospel of John say you cannot enter the kingdom unless you are born again well actually you have to be born three more times the first one is the Buddha level or the, or the enlightenment of the mind where you merge where you become one here it says Sorry, you'd have to have one of those lifetimes for each of those two. You would have to have a multitude of lifetimes because you're working on different laws in each. But life. you'd have you'd have to have at least one Buddha yeah, at least one. lifetime for each of those yes. spheres. Yes, you would. Probably. Anyway. Um, this is why it says when you see your images which came into being before you, and which neither die nor become manifest. What does it mean to be manifest? That means to go through that stage of birth where you are your higher self while in the body. This is very difficult. To fulfill the word ebonite means to be in the world and not of it, poor one, poor to the ways. Ebonite is not a sect, neither is Nazarene. Nazarene is the vow of consecra consecration. It has not a sect of people. Nazareth is not, is not a geographical place. The Ebonites were not a sect of Jews. 
or heretic Christians, or however you want to portray them. It was a condition of mind, of life, to be poor one, to be poor to the ways of thinking of this world. Because if, unless you're poor to the ways of thinking of this world, you can never bring about that next stage of birth. And unless you bring about the next stage of birth, you're not manifest. And that's exactly what the Gospel of Thomas says. Now, so our true self is not male, not female, not black, white, purple, yellow, whatever. It's not an American, it's not Chinese, it's not Italian, it's not Jewish. Your, being, your true self is a being of light. And yet because of living these lives, all these, what, these little things are part of it, especially the five races. What do we have, four races we know about now? Whatever. Um, they all represent aspects, filters to the soul that it can manifest strengths in. You, your true self is none of these. So if you see yourself as a woman, that's failure. You're a soul who is presently living in the body of a woman and playing the part of a woman on the stage of life. But you, your true self is not a woman. Your true self is not a man. Your true self is not black. Your true self is not half Indian. Your true self is not any of these. The true self is a being of light. And the body you're presently happening is filtering the energies in such a way to give you a unique perspective from the perspective the laws you were born under and the body you're inhabiting. But you must overcome these laws, you must overcome this limitation. Now, probably the woman thing, that's probably the easiest, because all you got to do is unite with your other half as your husband. But the feminism, racial ideologues, and everything else has made it near impossible in our present culture, because they're, they're victimizing and, and, and getting advantage on these differences amongst people instead of harmonizing and understanding what the differences are and who we truly are. If we were living in an advanced society, they would teach about the being of light. This is what you truly are. Sometimes you incarnate as a woman. Sometimes you incarnate as a man. Sometimes you incarnate in this race or that race or this nationality, but the core of you is still a being of light. You have no physical body like you do at present. This was one of the things that Justine condemned in the fifth, sixth century in the teachings associated with Originism, where the, what he calls the three chapters, I can look it up for you later if you want to see the exact words. He condemned the, that the, they were saying that uh, we don't, we're not resurrected with a physical body, that we're really spheres. Somebody knew the truth, that we weren't the body. And of course the church condemned that in the sixth century, that teaching, outlawed. Same as they outlawed the, the uh, teachings of origin on the pre-existent soul. So Christianity became hijacked by secular forces which means that if you continue to embrace the doctrines of those secular forces, then you are promoting a lie. A lie that has killed more, so many people that are uncountable. Death. Because they dwell in poverty, not knowing themselves. Now, because the people don't know themselves, like the yogis, the New Age, has one type, they believe in the collective consciousness. So they have this little insight that God is not a man with a beard sitting someplace like me. God is a, actually the whole and all we dwell within God. So they come up with this because they don't understand the higher reality of the soul, that even though we're all part of God, we're also unique individuals within God. They come up with this God that's best portrayed as what I call the divine amoeba. An amoeba, of course, is a one-celled animal. So if you are one, 
But the difference between an amoeba and man is that man is a very complex being. How many neurons do you have in your brain? An amoeba is a one-celled animal, so it's, it's, it dwells in oneness, but it's totally ignorant. It's not in the alpha. Dark ignorance. Unknowing. You, on the other hand, who is this complex creature, multifaceted, uncountable number of neurons, divisions within you, when you can bring that into one, you're enlightened. Well, God also, they, I, they envision this amoeba that, well, it doesn't matter, we're all just God. So, and God is one, so all individuality is an illusion. You've heard that, them state that. That's a lie. And this goes back to the thing of dwelling in poverty. In the same way that you, you, you have your intelligence based upon the diversity of your own mind which is brought about by an uncountable number of neurons within your mind and divisions and dimensions within your mind. God is enlightened because of all the division within him. And this division, the soul therefore can be compared to a single neuron in the mind of God. They say if you drink too much alcohol, you kill the neurons in your brain, you become retarded you've heard that saying, or whatever. So if, there would be, if your soul was suddenly swept up into the sea and no longer existed because of the divine amoeba syndrome, then God would become retarded. Because God knows all, because each soul is like a neuron in the mind of God. And the soul knows all things because each life that the soul has lived is like a neuron in the mind of the soul. We know all we know because we have so many dimensions to our own physical consciousness. We have so many neurons, so many aspects of self. We're not just one thought, one idea. We have diversity. An amoeba lacks that diversity. It's one. So if we're trying to achieve oneness, it's not the path of an amoeba. It's the path of bringing the whole ball of wax, the whole gamut of self, into harmony and oneness. The Omega, and yesterday we talked about um, the kingdom coming within you. And that because the, they interpret it external, they think the kingdom's going to come up on the earth. Where I showed where the commentary was talking about the microcosm and the macrocosm. The kingdom can only come upon the earth when the kingdom comes within each individual. And because everybody is enlightened, then you'll have the Omega. Not because some pissed off God says, I'm pissed at man, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to do whatever to him to him. This is nonsense. This is religious superstition. You don't have to believe me, you can go up to your own self, find your own self, and, and you can become enlightened to all these things. You don't even have to get to the logos. Your own soul knows this. But your soul is as a single neuron in the mind of God. Your soul is in harmony with all the rest of the souls that exist. And this is why in the realm of souls there is no violence, there is only harmony. But there's still individuality. Because if individual, uh, individuality did not exist, then God would be retarded. He'd become an amoeba again. So the whole New Age or Eastern idea of the collective consciousness, what they're worshipping is best described as a divine amoeba. And it's as stupid or as ignorant as the Jesus God of the church. Just another form of ignorance. And that's why I wrote in the next one, oneness does not mean the same. If myself and my wife are equal, that doesn't mean we're the same. Even in the case of enlightened beings, she's still manifest in a female body and she still has powers and strengths associated with the feminine form same way as I do the male form so equal does not mean the same equal among the races does not mean the same you can have two people of the races that are equal but the very presence of the race makes them unique 
equal does not mean the same because of the experiences that each soul brings into that life. Even if you had two equal souls, they'd still be different based upon the experiences that they've had throughout the dawn of time. I am as different from everybody here as everybody here is different from each other. It's because I'm the product of my experiences over the course of the, soul, the lives that my soul has lived. Notice I do not say the lives that I have lived because I was only came into being when I was conceived in this life. I did not live all those past life personalities. But by breaking the, by bridging the gap from here into my soul, I can communicate with my past life personalities. I can see what those images, and some of my, many of my images have become manifest in the past. That's why I can circumvent this thing of that I'm, instead of dwelling, instead of constantly wandering in poverty, where do I have it here? Um, to remain even for those who really seek the truth, always wander in error. As a recipient of a named recipient of that epistle, I can overcome that because I've accomplished and my soul has accomplished that in past lives. So that's mine. I possess it. It's part of my spiritual DNA. Those who have never accomplished this, they'll wander the wor world in error until they, and from life to life to life, image to image to image, until one of them does overcome and prevail. Do we have any questions? The vast majority of mankind just doesn't even begin. They're just little flickering lights. They're following. You have a, a tiny minority that actually prevail and actually achieve the next stage of birth. So, what happens to those in the middle that are we're actually are working on it? That they're probably fail the most dangerous. <laughs> fail to actually. They're, they're probably the most dangerous. They're what you would call, what I would portray as the advanced soul. These are the leaders and the shakers. I said, Hitler is still here amongst us. Mohammed is still here amongst us. We can call him the president if we want. <laughs> Constantine is here amongst us. We can call him Putin if we want. All these souls from the past, you talk about history constantly repeating itself. People thought it was strange. How could I be the, the uh, brother of Yeshua? I'm, this tells you I'm the brother of Yeshua because I'm one of the few people who understand what's being said here. And I can tell you how it is, how it was supposed to be. Where did this knowledge come from? I didn't make it up. I'd be just as ignorant as everybody else if, I didn't, if it wasn't revealed to me. I possess that ability because of my spiritual DNA, not because of anything in this life that I've done. I used to be a drunken volunteer fire captain coin requirement. And then all of a sudden things changed in my life. And they made it that way. And the reason I was told they made it that way is that nobody has an excuse. And I was told to see, show, see where I came from. If I came from this, then you can. But each one of you is a cheating because I've done all the work for you. <laughs> I, I have told you why. If the, es if the spiritual essence of the gospel was to become lost, and this esoteric body of knowledge was to become lost, why remain all those who seek to wander in error? Whether they call themselves a yogi, whether they call themselves a master, some Hindu master, whether they call themselves a prophet of God, whether they call themselves a Kabbalist, enlightened, whatever, they're all going to wander in error unless they understand the reality of the soul unless they understand the microcosm and the macrocosm, unless they understand the powers, the strengths of a hologram. Science now has become enlightened, sometimes more enlightened than what religion has caught up to. Um, my writings are merely catching the religious world up to some of the things that science has come to realize. Basically, the powers of a hologram. And that's that within each piece of the fragment of the whole, the whole pattern exists. This is 
So within, in the same way we all exist within God, well, all that we see also exists within us. And the same way that we have lesser personalities, which Gurdjieff portrayed as false personalities, the soul has lesser personalities which incarnate into this world. These are the images spoken about in Gospel of Thomas 84. After all, the Gospel of Thomas 80, the Gospel of Thomas said that if you understand what's being said here, you'll never taste death, which I agree with wholeheartedly. But to understand it, you have to experience it. It's not something that can be taught. Gnosis is not written in any book. Gnosis cannot be taught by me or anybody else. Gnosis cannot be in our libraries. It cannot be in our universities. Gnosis is that experiential knowledge derived, received from the Logos, the mind of God. So all those who call themselves Gnostic, they don't understand what the word Gnosis means, the majority of them. There is no rituals in Gnosis, no indoctrination. No secret orders. It's all within oneself. And each person here, take the, the lowest of the souls in this room right now. The soul of each person knows more than all the professors in our universities. All the rabbis that teach, all the teachers that teach, all the prophets, the least soul in this room their soul self knows more than all those put together. This is why all that one has to do is begin to tap in and find themselves. This is why it says, unless you know yourself, you dwell in poverty. And the one who knows, whoever finds himself is superior to the world. Let's take the whole accumulation of the world. And he who finds himself is superior to all that accumulated knowledge that exists in all our universities, all our libraries, all our greatest teachers. I can't express gnosis in the words I'm speaking. I can only tell you how to find it. I can only tell you direct you. That makes, that's why I'm not a teacher. That's why I'm a guide. I'll guide you in the way. I'll tell you what you gotta do to find it within yourself. Nothing more, just a servant. And, that is the key. When the prodigal son came, it's right, it says the prodigal son came to his senses after losing all his inheritance, which is his energy upon which his consciousness rides into the earth. He finally comes to his senses, and what does he say to himself? He says, let me be as a servant of my father, as a hired hand. And that's the key to return becoming a servant of the way. Not a teacher of the way, because there is only one teacher, but someone who helps others to find that teacher. The rest of the lost prodigal sons. Did that answer your question? Any other questions? There you got the opportunity to ask any question you want on the soul. Did I answer them all? St. Um, Teresa? <laughs> Could you go back to the question that Nina asked earlier? I, I didn't quite catch where something about we have to have a Buddha life for every... You have to, well... Sphere or something? I didn't quite get that. Uh, as scary. Jacob, I, be, I, I was... I, I brought about... I was, the next stage of birth was brought about. But I only perfected the laws I was born under in that life. There was still a whole lot that I had to perfect. But in that life, I was then able to work on my spiritual birth. Subsequently, I lived a life as David, which I rarely ever talk about, which was, was uh, in between that and Matthew, which was where I was born to the Ebonite as an elder, and again achieved the next stage of birth, and went beyond that. But each time I was born into these various lives, Francis, the source of Islam, which was not Mohammed, um, I was born under different laws. 
I was working on different things. And of course, I was able to take the strength of those lives and work them there and prevail <coughs> again. Each person has to do that. You only, you don't have to be, you don't have to overcome the whole enchilada.